And now after we learn the DRBFM process step by step and understood all the science and the philosophies behind it, we are ready to go look at an actual DRBFM worksheet template and uh, learn how does the worksheet of a DRBFM would look like before you fill any information or any product details inside of it. So here you can see this is the uh, first page or first tab of the RBFM worksheet. As we said, the RBFM worksheet could be Excel format, could be PDF format, could be a handwritten, uh, whatever method your organization is preferring to do. So firstly, you start with the overall explanation diagram. So here you put your part name and the part number if needed. Then baseline design, as we mentioned before, you put the overall assembly or the big picture of your product then you can put here an exploded view and put more details about parts that's for your baseline design it's the important is to put the big picture or the change points that are being to be uh, happening in your design like let's say if you have a car and you're going to change the tires then you put a big picture for the car then you put a big picture for the tire and probably an exploded view to call out the product that will be or the, the component that will be changed. In the new design, that's where you put all the details. All pictures and details should be exploded views. You can put a big picture again just to demonstrate. Then you can put exploded views for the assemblies, exploded views for sub assemblies, exploded views for parts and sub components and so on. Then you call them out with numbers and letters to be able to reference them as moving forward in your comparison list and change matrix and so on. Of course, you can add as many copies of this page as possible. So you don't need to squeeze yourself in one rectangle but you can add as many pages as needed with putting the right part name or the headline for that part as needed. But try to write down in writing as much as possible um, and call out all the parts, especially the parts that are affected by the change. Next, you go to your change comparison list. If you want to zoom in here. So this is your change comparison list. How does it look like? You start with the system. And here you are mentioning the lead department or engineer. So you put the department name in this box and you put the name of the engineer or the lead in this box. If you can put contact information like an email address, that will be great. Then you have the assembly part. You can put here the responsible department or engineer as well. Department and engineer name, contact names if needed. Sub assembly parts. Then you put here the responsible department or engineer and names individual parts responsible department and names so when you put the system department responsible person here and the the assembly responsible person here sub assembly resp responsible person here whatever your parts start to break down then you use that like let's say in sub assembly parts now you have parts a b and c and d so you can put part a and you put the name of it here part b and the name of it here part, part c and name of it part d and name of it then when you go to individual parts Maybe part A is breaking down to more parts, so you want to list it down and break it in a uh, kind of um, hierarchy diagram to be able to point to the right row in your Excel sheet. So here you put the reference from Explode View. You can say here part A1, list of components. Does A1 have any components related to it? Then you put the list of components A1, A1 prime, A1 double prime, and so on. What category is that part in or that component in? Then you put the base design. How does this component look like in the base or old design? And how does it or will it look like in the new design? Then you put any references. If you feel there's more details need to be mentioned, then you put them in uh, references as a, as a separate tab. And you mention what's that name or code for that reference. And hopefully you can link it. So when you click on it, you can go back and see all the details about it. And so on and so on. This list will be so long in a well-defined part or a kind of a, a medium to high complexity products. This list could go on and on and be as complicated uh, as you can imagine. But the important you capture all parts, you don't miss anything. As we said, the usefulness of this page, depending so much on your visualization. If your parts are not broken down and you're giving name A for a group 
um, of components or parts, then you will not be specified in this case. So the more detailed and breakdown your visualization is, the better and clearer your list is in this case. Then next, we go to our hierarchy diagram and functions list. So here, again, you have system, assembly parts, sub-assembly and individual. You put the lead department or engineer responsible for that, and you break it down in a similar way as you did previously. But here, what you do, you are listing for each component. You are listing the function of that component between the basic and the new design. So you can tell what does this component play in your system or in your assembly and so on. Of course, you need to make sure that the basic function or additional function need to be, basic function for sure need to be filled in. Additional function is optional. But as I said, the more details you put, the better. It helps you first and help the experts in the design review meetings and help you all together produce eventually a durable product and capture all the change points and the potential concerns that could show up along the way. Just a tip here, you can use all the way from here to here, you can use whatever you uh, made in your uh, change comparison list. You can use them again here because they are identical. So you just here put the function of each component, subcomponent and part um, between as a basic function, what it is doing in the general form and what does it do specifically. Again, you can always add another tab for references if you feel always need to add more references to that. If we go next, we go to our change matrix. So in our change matrix, which some people call it change point cross functions matrix, because you put change points here and you put functions here. So they say it's change point crossing with functions matrix. But I think it's a more convenient term is to say the change matrix. Now you are identifying the changes happening. How does each change point is interacting with each function for these components in the system and which is considered a potential concern which is considered as a confirmed concern and which is a no concern so you list your components here again an easy kind of a tip to make your life easy here you can use those list of components and base and new with reference back from, from your change uh, from your change point comparison list you can put them in here. Functions list probably need more time, a little bit more time in formatting, but it's the same thing. You can put all the functions from the functions list in here. You need to make it as prepared and as straightforward and as clear as possible. So then you say, okay, component A1 prime, when it moved from base design to new design, referenced by number uh, Z. When it interact with the function of component B1, what happened? Does the expert think there is a possible concern in here or a confirmed concern and so on? So you fill your matrix, you put the legend you want, you want to use O, X and uh, probably N slash A, then you can do that. If you want to do colors like red circle, orange circle and green circle, you can do that as well. Whatever way would work with you. But remember that in your functions list, you you reference from the block diagram, you need to mention the assembly, sub assemblies and individual parts. Then you want to mention the basic functions for all parts and any additional necessary functions. And you put here sometimes lessons learned or past problems. What did happen in the past uh, with that function so that you will give it extra attention while you're doing your change list so that the past problems will not show up again. Then if we go next, we go to our design review participants list. So here you list all the experts that you need along the way. So we have here category on department, functional or part, and area department, suppliers, responsible experts, and related design engineering department, testing department, material department, and so on. This list could change between each organization and another, or between each part and another. So you need to do your best judgment based on what you learned in your organization in terms of contacts and put them in here 
um, each one with his related area of expertise. So you put company name and department, you put participant name, title, and if you put a contact, that will make sense as well. So here you have first design review date, you put the date for that. Of course, you have your schedule in your company, so you know that date when it would happen. Importantly, it will happen before production while you are in development. You start the DRBFM design reviews as early as possible whenever you have a material ready to be reviewed. Second design review, third, fourth, etc. You can add as much as you want and you add dates as necessary. And uh, here you want to indicate which members you invited already. You want to invite in a time manner to make sure all of them will attend and it's with respect to their schedules. And uh, when you finish the meeting, you put who attended and who's not. So that in the future, no, you know, um, I wouldn't say who to blame, but you would know where the problem happened from because somebody from packaging department didn't attend and nobody from packaging department was represented. So in this case, we had a packaging problem. We considered all problem, but we missed the packaging problem in this case and so on, you know, and design review participant list when created, you can always change it. But I mean, usually it will stay the same. Then you will start to do design reviews. Uh, with the experts as moving forward. Here we have the S rank worksheet. Usually we don't do this. It's like for the least important uh, concerns that you identified. We usually use the A rank worksheet. It's typical and similar. So you put here your part name and change point that's confirmed in the change matrix. Then you put the requirement or function that's related to that concern. How did that change point interact with that function? That's why you identify it as a concern. Concern points due to change or the failure mode. Why do you think it's a, I mean, how does the concern show up? What is the failure mode? Then you mention when and how the concern appears as a root cause. Then from here, you could jump to your next tab as a root cause analysis and mention and show your root cause analysis for that part. And uh, how did you dig down to find the main cause behind this problem? When and how and where it happens? Then does it affect the customer? Yes or no? If yes, how? And if no, why? Then you can put the importance. You can put your own legend on the importance. Like like from 1 to 10, this is like a very important problem. So give it 1. If it's not very important problem, this is 10. Then you will take design actions already taken to avoid concern. Did you do any actions so far with the teams? To avoid that concern then the items that reflect to the design so that will uh, represent the drawing control specifications and considering tolerances so any item that uh, reflect to the design so in order to solve that problem you would reflect the design you will mention it here and items to reflect evaluation this way how did the evaluation uh, take place so those are parts of the recommendations of the design review experts. So after you sit with the, with the experts, they gave you uh, design recommendations, evaluation recommendations, and production processes recommendation. After our A rank, there's additional steps if you want to add more details for design uh, review members and reviewers. So current condition and new condition after the design review, design steps taken to avoid concern. So you can put any manager's instructions, item to reflect in production process, similar to the A rank, but if you want to add more, or if the design members want to add more, they can add here. Eventually you can, some people love to put change category keywords, like what were the keywords for the change, intentional changes and unintentional changes you, you pointed here. Personally, I don't see any value in that, but it's up to you. You can put the function category list as well. That's kind of a reference or a legend to your document. I don't see a value myself in that. And uh, here you can put the concern points, like kind of generalized form, like possible failures. If you have a static load, then the stress would have those kind of failures. If you have a fluid exposure, the stress and possible failures, those are references that depend on the product type and depend on the application. So I don't recommend these as well.